If you run a roofing business and you feel like you're lacking a little clarity and direction, stick around because on this Academy lesson, Dave Sullivan from The Roofer Show is here to share his eight-step business plan that you need to know about. Hey everyone, welcome back to another Contractor Success Academy lesson. Thank you for being here today. I'm here with Dave Sullivan. Dave, thanks for being with us. Hey, great to see you again, Mark. Yeah, it's always good. You and I have spoken so many times. I've been uh, interviewed on your <laughs> on your podcast, so it's nice uh, to be about able to a half to, dozen times. Yeah, yeah, it's nice to kind of return the return the favor and and more importantly, put a face uh, <laughs> put put a face to uh, to a name. I've always told you you got a great radio voice, but I said, ah, let's yeah, see if you got a face for yeah. For, that's what my mother said for internet. <laughs> <laughs> I've heard. Yeah, I've got a face for radio. <laughs> <laughs> Cool. Um, so for those of you watching, uh, depending on where you're watching or listening, make sure that you like, subscribe, leave us your thoughts, comments. We definitely appreciate that. Dave, you have been uh, in the roofing world for a long time. You had uh, your own roofing business. And uh, I'd love before we kind of get into what you're going to share with us today, for you to just tell us kind of the backstory, how you got started. And uh, I guess then uh, from there, we can get into your what you're going to share with the Academy uh, members today. Yeah, happy to. Um, I live out here in California and I grew up in a family, small roofing company. And I would work there in the summers, did some sales in college, uh, went to the University of California Business School. And the plan was I was going to take some time off and then come into the family business. But what happened was my father had a heart attack and my plan changed a bit. So I had to jump into the business and really kind of take over. So I got there and I was just not prepared at all. I did not know what the heck I was doing. And uh, it, it, it's a lot different than you learn in business school. Now you've got just fires everywhere, right? So I had a real problem getting going. We weren't making any money. It was really difficult. And early on, I brought a consultant in to help me get things back on track. And really the first thing that he did, we put together a business plan on where I wanted to go and a roadmap on how to get there. So since I've done my coaching, um, this is something that I see so many contractors just don't have a plan. Mm -hmm. And just keeping it simple. And really that was what I come back to say was the success of my business. Um, and I was a contractor for oh, 20, 30, 30 years now. And I've since retired. And I coach a lot of contractors. And it's just always, first off, let's start with a plan. Yeah. And I put this together and I keep it simple. And I have what's called a, just a one-page business plan just to get people started on the process of planning. Yeah, that's awesome. So it's 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 interesting. I think you know you can probably attribute a lot of uh, ROI to that decision you made back then. Of you know, okay, I'm trying to put out all these fires. I can't do it alone. I need some help. Let's bring somebody in. And that one that one decision to kind of have some outside help come in and clear things up for you probably. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably it good. changed changed everything. It changed the direction of the business. What really was going on was that we had always done residential roofing and we'd always done commercial. Mm -hmm. And so coming off a Mrs. Jones house, now you're onto this big warehouse. It just didn't work out very well. So it wasn't a smooth transition, but I always thought the residential was where we made our money. And the first thing this consultant did was let's take a look. And I go, well, it's all blended together. We broke it out into profit centers and it turned out that we were actually losing money on the residential wow. and making our money on the commercial. And the residential was just dragging it on, you know, dragging it down. So what we did, we dropped that the next day and focused on commercial and it's taken off ever since. Yeah. It's funny how, you know, from coming from the marketing world, how that uh, same sort of philosophy still applies, right? When you take that data and you kind of break it out, now you can start attributing. You know, a lot of people spend dollars on marketing. They're getting, you know, they're generating revenue. They're getting some success, but what aspects of of my marketing is responsible for what? And too many people mm -hmm. are in the dark in that sense. So that's cool. They try to be everything to everybody, and that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah. So, Dave, um, 
let's have you share the, the business plan. I've seen it before. I think it's awesome. It's simple to the point. I think it's going to you know clear things up for a lot of people that are maybe in that, uh, you know, the boat that you were in 25, 30 years ago <laughs> and uh, have you kind of walk us through that step by step. I think that'd be really, sure. really cool. Yeah. And as I say, this is really designed to just get people started on the process of planning, which is taking a step back and really thinking about these things and writing it down, providing something for your team, um, you know, is giving them some direction so everybody's on the same page. But what I found was that contractors, you know, they didn't have the time, didn't know where to get started, just didn't know what to do. So I have a download on my website at theroofershow.com and you can download it for free and it's just a, a simple eight step PDF. And there's a fillable PDF where on one page, you just fill it out. It's real short, but it gets you thinking about what's going on. So really these eight steps, as I start with the end, is that always starting at the end, where is it that you want to go? Where do you want to end up? And then we can design a roadmap to get you there. But I like to see contract, you know, what's your plan? What do you want to do? Maybe depending on where you are in your business and your journey, generally what happens is people get to that end and they want to try to sell their business and there's no value there. They've been working their butts off all these years, but they haven't been building a business that's saleable and they end up just closing the doors. So the first thing we want to take a look at is, you know, maybe you've got kids that, um, want to come into the business. Maybe it's just you and you want to be able to sell this to an outside buyer or another roofing business down the road. So we start there just as if we would start to drive to New York City. We've got to have a roadmap to get there. So we come back and I like to start off with the customer. Now, the what, who, where, and why. The what is determining what business you're really in. And this goes back to where I was talking about the residential and the commercial side is that focusing on what you do best. And I believe in niching down your business. Like I say, all we did was commercial roofing and we did re-roofing. We did no, no new construction. We didn't do any public work and we focused down on what we did really well and we were the best at it and it was extremely profitable. So it's first deciding where you're going to focus your efforts because I, I start working with contractors and they're doing windows, they're doing, you know, uh, basements, roofing, all types of things. I go, you know, where is it that you make your money? Well, I don't know. And that's the first thing is what is it that you do? Okay. The who is who is that ideal prospect? Who are you going to focus down on? And you have to really take it down to your avatar, that one person, that one customer that you wish you had a hundred just like that are, you know, uh, don't gripe about your pricing. They pay their bills. You know, they're easy to work with those type of people. So that's focusing on the who. In our case, we focus down on commercial re-roofing and maintenance. So we wanted someone that was a, uh, an investor, uh, multiple buildings. He's not a flipper. He's interested in value and someone that's going to be a long-term holder that's interested in a maintenance program, for instance. And so that's really the who is really focusing down on who that is. The where is where do these guys hang out, you know, and this is, and how do we get to them? And this is where we would go to go to you, for instance, and say, Mark, how do we get in touch with these guys? Right. Where are they? And get us in front of them. Okay. The why of the customer is what makes you different? What makes you better? Um, what's your differentiation? And you have to understand this because if your customer can't tell the difference between you and everybody else that's coming out there, then you're just a commodity and they would only buy on low price. Why wouldn't they? So you have to show them how you're different and where you're creating value uh, so you can charge what you need to charge to make a good profit. Okay. Make sense so far? 
Yeah, so far so good. And I, I like the last point you make, you know, the why. Um, th- it becomes easier when you are niche and when you are focused, right? You've got one consumer, you understand them well. Um, you can articulate the value that you bring over anyone else. Uh, and then attracting more of those, you know, uh, buyers that resemble that persona or avatar that you mentioned just becomes easier because now you, you're kind of stacking up more wins in that category. Mm-hmm. So naturally you're drawing in and you're attracting more, more business like that, which is, which is neat. Mm-hmm. Too many contractors, you know, the, the, the phone will ring, they'll drop everything, they'll run out and see who they are without really qualifying that prospect, that lead and seeing if it's fits into your ideal prospect, because if it doesn't, you shouldn't waste your time on tire kickers and yeah. people that are not going to buy that are just looking for the cheapest price. And this is what we're doing by really focusing in on that. And also it gives you the time to spend with those valuable prospects that want value. Mm-hmm. And you can, uh, they're not just one of these, one of these guys that's saying, Hey, drop off your, uh, you know, your bid in the mailbox and move on. So it's really, that's why we always, we start with the customer defining that, see who we are. And then from there, I move on to what I call the focus. And this is kind of a a one minute elevator pitch. And in business school, they teach you the first thing is to come up with a mission statement, you know, which is really defining what you do, who you do it for. And we did that. We spent a lot of time doing that in my business. We put a plaque up on the wall. Six months later, nobody could remember it, right? So (laughs) what good is that? So what I I like to do is come up with a quick elevator pitch. And for those that may not know what an elevator pitch is, the idea is that you get in on the top floor of an office building, and here's the biggest property manager in town, for instance. And you strike up a little little conversation, wants to know, hey, what do you do? And so forth. And you've got his you've got his ear from the top to the bottom. And as soon as that door opens up, if he can't wait to get out of there, you did not <laughs> make a good pitch. And the idea is to create interest in what you're doing. Well, there's three steps to a good elevator pitch. And the first one is, what is the problem that you solve? What's the problem in the marketplace? And that's generally um, roofing contractors, they go out of business and you're left with nothing. You don't know what's going on on the roof and everybody's got the problem. So all you've got to do is check with the better business bureau and roofing contractors tend to be the highest complaints and you may not be aware of that. Okay. The second one is how do you solve that problem better than your competition? And that's a matter of, well, uh, we've been in business 20 years and I can provide you with this long list of referrals and phone numbers and you can check out our work, go to our website. We've got our portfolio on there and this is how we solve it. And we've got, you know, trained personnel. We don't go down to Home Depot and bring out, you know, some guys off of there. All these people are employees at our business. And the third step is what's the action you want them to take? It may be, hey, I'd love to sit down. Can you set an appointment? Uh, it may be, can I get your business card, or your email address? Because I've got a, a PDF that how to hire a roofing contractor that you can trust. And I'll send that to you. And so that's the idea is getting information and asking, and hopefully you're getting them to ask for more, you know, tell me more about that. That's interesting. Okay. And that's what I call the focus, just quick, easy. And the advantage about that is that how many times have you been to a business meeting or a cocktail party even, and people ask you, well, what do you do? And it's just like, uh, you're not prepared for that. So this is something that you'd want to practice. And what it does, it gets you to think and focus down on what it is that you do, how you help them, and what action do you want them to take. Make yeah, sense? And, yeah. And, and, and crafting a, you know, a, a, an elevator pitch is something that I think people need to spend some time on. It's, you know... Uh, whether you're in the car, in the shower, or whatever it is, think about it, come up with some concepts, share it with your team, bounce it around, um, and just get get buy-in from people. It's, you know, I think mm-hmm. that's important. 
and practice. <laughs> yep, exactly. <laughs> so you yeah. have it prepared. Yeah. And our next step, the fourth step, is what we call the SWAT. And this is basically strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And we take a look at that and break down what are your strengths. Well, I've got uh, a great sales force. I've got a great sales system. Um, we're very good at marketing, so we've got a great um, um, flow of leads coming in. It may be your field personnel. Whatever that is, we've got to determine the strengths. Weaknesses, maybe we don't have the sales team that we should. Um, we don't have systems and processes in place and we keep making the same mistakes over and over again. So, and just taking a look at that and discussing that, the opportunities, what are the opportunities? Well, here we are in the COVID-19 situation. What's ahead? Are there opportunities ahead? Well, there sure are. And you've got to take a look at that. How are we going to jump on those opportunities? Threats, um, one major threat is this, this shutdown could go on and on and on. We don't know, but, uh, or do we have new competition coming into town? For instance, uh, what are those threats? And that's our SWAT. Just take a look at what that is, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. And the next step is taking a look at the operation and, this is really what business comes down to if you simplify it is that it's like a three-legged stool you've got to sell work you've got to do work and you've got to keep score and to keep that stool strong you have to have each of those legs uh equally strong so for instance we take a look at your sales okay you're selling work what does that look like do you have a good sales process What's your close rate? What's your average job size? All of these numbers. We've got to take a look at that and just a, just a brief look uh, at this point, okay? Um, the do work. Well, usually we're pretty good at doing the work because most of the contractors came up through the trades. So that may not be a problem. We, we, we may be strong there. But one of the, the third leg is really where I see so much weakness, and that is the keeping score or the bookkeeping and accounting. And too many contractors just don't like the numbers. So they push it off onto somebody else. It's may not be qualified um, or they get embezzled even worse. And this is, this is something, and, and normally usually one of those legs is weak and you could have, all this work, but a problem that we had, you know, only a month ago, we didn't have the people to do it. So we couldn't take on additional work. So our do work leg was weak or what was happening is we're doing so much work here uh, recently that maybe we weren't getting the bills out. So here we are blowing through all this work. We've got to pay our payroll. We've got to pay our suppliers, but, we're not getting the money in. We're not getting the cash in because they've been delayed getting the bills out. So it's taking a look at all of these, making sure that all three legs are strong and solid. Make sense? Yeah, I like that. Okay. Then the next one that we come to is what I call the process. And that's the two week vacation. So, the idea is that here you are a contractor and you just want a two week vacation to Hawaii. But the, the, the catch is that you've got to leave in two days. Well, most contractors couldn't do that. They'd say, I can't go away. My business would fall apart. It relies on me or only just a couple of main people. And that's no way to run a business. When we talk about starting at the end where we want to eventually sell our business and have build value, you've got to be uh, in a position where you, you can step away. But if it's reliant on you, there's no value in that business because there's, you know, you want to retire, you want to get out of the business, but there's nothing there. So you end up closing the doors. So if we start with the two week vacation, that's our goal. How do we get you there? Well, you've got to have the, first, you've got to have the positions 
clearly designed and what you want your people to do. Uh, define that, how you're going to hold them accountable and how all this works and be able to step back and get out of the way and let them do the job. And that's the only way that you're ever going to build a solid business where it just doesn't rely on you. Mm-hmm. And that's what's so important. And that's the end goal. So what we'll do, you know, let's say in six months, we want you to be able to take a, a two week vacation, boom, where you can get away. Don't have to worry about it. You know that your business is running and money's coming in and work's getting done. And that's what we call the process. The seventh step is what we call the action because having a plan without taking action is not worthwhile. We've got to be able to take action, but we've got so many things that we want to do. And I call this the, you know, the one thing. What's the one thing that's going to make the difference in your business? And we want to take a look at that. It's not the only thing, but it's the one thing that needs your attention. And you want to focus on that and get that done. And what's involved with doing that? Um, Let's say we want to set up a maintenance division. Okay. And we want to do roof maintenance. Well, what's that going to look like? Okay. We're going to have... um, assign the task to someone. Here are the steps that are necessary. And here are the dates that we want to have this done. And we're going to review this and we're going to get this accomplished. In six months, we're going to be up and running, but here's what's involved. And it's just that one thing. So we focus on that, not that everything else doesn't have to get done, but we won't, don't want to be all over the board like so many people are. You know, you're constantly out putting out fires and you never achieve your goals. So we want to focus on that one thing. And the final step and the eighth step is something that's a little different. And I call that the view. And it's, do you like what you see? Because I know so many contractors that get to the end. Okay, whatever that is, maybe they carry you out in a box or, you know, maybe you want to sell that business. Okay, too many contractors I see, they get out of the business and that's all they've known all their life. They don't have a life outside of business. So they're like, they get to the top, mountaintop, they, you know, and you're taking a look around you don't like what you see. You don't have any really friends outside of the business. You don't have hobbies. You're just sitting there and you're unhappy. And this is where a lot of deals fall apart. When sales are getting ready to go through, this is when they start to think, well, what am I going to do? All I know is this business. And they just can't pull the trigger. So I like always like to look forward and That's why, you know, do you like what you see? What are you going to do? What's this going to look like? Do you have a lot of hobbies? As opposed to just looking at what I call the pot of gold, retirement. I just want to grind this out and get to the end. But be sure you like what you're going to see. Because too many times, contractors don't. And what's the point of that? Mm-hmm. And that's our plan. And so the idea is just on one page, you're condensing this down. We're giving it some thought. Um, maybe the beginning will be, you know, just run through it for two or three hours, four hours. And you're going to have a pretty good idea just taking a step back for the first time. You're really going to spend some time thinking about you know, that ideal customer, what makes you different? What is that you really want to do? And by doing that, it just gives you an idea of the direction to go, where to put your efforts. And also when you're building your team, your people want to see somebody that has a plan, that knows where they're going, that's going to be a leader and someone that we can follow. And we all get on the same page. It's like, okay, you see that mountaintop over there, guys? That's where we're going. And I'm going to get you there. And we're going to do it in the most direct way that we can. And it's as simple as that. 
Well, you make me sound like I should be starting a roofing company now, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> That's all there is to it. It's it's, it's simple. Like steps and you're good. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, what's the what's the uh, the reason why you know? Because I I know you coach and you help a lot of uh, you know roofing companies. I mean, where is it that most people fall short? Are they just not leveraging plans like this altogether, or they're doing it but they're not kind of um, coming back to them once in a while to make sure that they're like staying the course. Like what's, what are the biggest pitfalls that, that you see with, res, with uh, respect to, to business plans and that kind of thing? Well, I work with a lot of smaller contractors, so they're just kind of getting off the ground and mm-hmm. it's like, uh, they'll do anything, you know, right. great. You know, you need your house painted. Sure. I'll do that. <laughs> you know? okay, okay. And it, it keeps you from making progress because you're just too scattered. So by, you know, just focusing this down and getting a plan, particularly now, is so important to really um, take a look at this considering the situation that we're in with the COVID-19 is that you may have a plan now. Well, that's all changed. Mm -hmm. What are you going to do now? You know, it's like uh, the boxer Mike Tyson says, you know, everybody's got a plan until you get punched in the mouth. (laughs) And we just got punched in the mouth. So (laughs) how do do we adapt to this? What's going to be our new plan? Because, you know, we may have to be doing virtual selling now. We may have to, um, um, you know, there's going to be, uh, that office market, you know, is, is what's going to happen with that in commercial properties, you know, is the value, the value is going to go down. Is everybody going to be working from home? What's that going to look like? So we at least have to step back and see, make sure that we're ready to, for that and make sure we're ready to take advantage of the opportunities that are going to present themselves. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm a big fan of uh, frameworks, Dave. I think frameworks are just easy to follow. Um, you mm-hmm. know, it's something that you can print, fill it out. You can make, you know, a couple of people go through the exercise with you and, you know, keeping score, you mentioned, I think on the operation side is something that, you know, it's nice to do this exercise, but if you don't come back to it every once in a while, it's, it's kind of renders it useless. Exactly. Um, and a quick plug for a friend of yours, Vicki Suter. Uh, we had her oh, yeah. in the academy. She did a lesson with us and uh, talked a lot about how um, on the process side of things, your people, how to uh, get them to do what you want them to do. So we'll put the, put the link up in here and you guys can kind of watch, watch that because there's some really insightful stuff there. There really um, is. And, and Vicki's great. And this is, she, she has a program where you really take a look at, what has been our number one problem and that's recruiting a players Mm -hmm. and retaining a players. Um, What's going to happen now? I don't know. I think some companies are going to go out of business. Maybe there's more people available and that's not our biggest problem. But a month ago we couldn't get people. So Vicki does a great job at putting together a program to help you with that. Yeah. And I think the key, the key thing there is, okay, maybe there, you know, the workforce, you got a bit more choice now and you, you know, more, more people out there looking for work, but if you still got your bad habits in place, you're not, you know, your culture, you're not treating them well. People don't know what's expected of them. They don't have that roadmap internally, what they should be doing. There goes your retention. So if you're mm-hmm. constantly playing the whole churn and burn game, that's not much use. And what we're going to see is, how how do you act during this crisis? Mm-hmm. Are you showing leadership? Are you taking care of your people? If you have to lay them off, are you being straight with them and say, here's what the situation is? And are you keeping in touch with them? Are you doing okay, for instance? And I think what's going to happen is a lot of these people are going to be feel that they were just not, it, it didn't go well for them with their last employer. And there's going to be a, a, an opportunity to make some serious upgrades, I think, coming out of this, because this will be a good opportunity for people to make a change. Yeah, I, I can't disagree with you, Dave. I think you're absolutely right. Um, people are going to see the true colors of, you know, the employers <laughs> and stuff. So, <laughs> you know, it's nice yeah. to take and take. But, you know, in times like this, you got to you got to be there and support your team. Um, Dave, I want to thank you for taking the time to um, come in and share this, this lesson with the folks here. Um, what's the link that we should be uh, sending people to, to download this PDF once again? We'll put it yeah, go to my website at the Uh There's a, um, uh, a link for just 
clicking on that, you can download the PDF. You can fill it out. It won't take you long. And what I do is that once you've checked that out, if you want to get deeper into it, I have a little um, uh, two-hour course that I have that I'll work with you and really get this thing going. First part is to dig down deeper on the plan. And the second part is how are we going to implement that? Mm-hmm. So yeah, the roofer show.com and uh, check out my podcast. It comes out every Friday. You can hear Mark on there and it's uh, uh, we got some great experts that come on that can really help you in the industry. Yeah. Yeah. You got some great episodes. I was just listening to uh, uh, an episode the other night, actually a uh, gentleman, I'm forgetting his name, but from Alta Vista, another marketing company. Really good stuff. There you there. go. Yeah. It's a good, if, if you can't sleep, you know, that's a great one to <laughs> <laughs> but li- listen to my podcast. You'll be out in minutes. <laughs> well, Dave, thanks again for being here, my friend. I appreciate it. And uh, all the best. Talk soon. Great to see you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you.